As soon as the baby was born, the cruel stepfather snatched him up and tossed him into the sewer. That's where poor little Mattia was abandoned, until a homeless man who found him just in time gave him that name and saved his life. The man raised him, unaware that years later, something remarkable was destined to unfold. On a Friday afternoon in Miliano, a man who made a living collecting plastic waste heard the faint cry of a baby from the filthy riverbed. At first, he thought he was imagining things, but as he looked closer, he spotted a newborn lying there. With great effort, Emiliano climbed out of the putrid water, carefully placing the baby in the small wheelbarrow he used to haul the waste he collected for sale. Using the money he had earned that day, he went to the store and bought diapers, milk, and bottles for the baby, whom he named Matteo in honor of his late father. He wrapped the child in his old sweater and carried him everywhere. When his friends asked about the baby, he explained how he had found him. They all thought he was crazy to care for a child whose origins were a mystery. Meanwhile, in the house of Isabella, the child's mother, everything was in chaos. The woman who was middle class had fallen in love with an engineer working at a construction site near her house. They fell in love and made love, and months later, she found out she was pregnant. When she arrived at the construction site to look for her beloved, she was told that he had suddenly been transferred to another site. Isabella was dismayed and didn't understand how fate could be so cruel to her and her child. None of the Masons knew where to find the engineer, and she was inconsolable. She arrived home, and when she told her parents what was happening, her father exploded in fury, insisting that she would have to marry someone to cover up her mistake. Juan, the girl's best friend who had always been in love with her, offered to be her husband and raise her son as his own. Juan, I don't love you, and I hope you understand that our marriage will only be for appearances, said Isabella. The man replied that he only wanted to help her. Just a month later, the wedding took place. It was supposed to be a small family ceremony, but the girl's parents invited all their friends, turning it into a grand celebration. There was everything in abundance, except happiness. Although Juan appeared joyful, Isabella couldn't hide her tears and told everyone she was crying from happiness. However, rumors started to spread. During their honeymoon, the young husband couldn't handle Isabella's rejection and began partying with her money. In the following days, things went from bad to worse. When they returned, they settled into the beautiful house Isabella's parents had given them. Juan made it clear that her father would have to cover all the expenses as he wasn't willing to work. The gentleman accepted the deal and he lived an excellent life. He would go out partying without worrying about expenses, and if the woman complained, he would remind her that, thanks to him, she wasn't seen as dishonorable in the eyes of society. He threatened that she'd better keep him happy, or he'd tell everyone that the child she was carrying belonged to another man. The man, consumed by bitterness over Isabella's rejections, decided to punish her by abandoning their child. He hired a midwife and after the baby was born, drugged Isabella with tea laced with a sleeping pill. While she slept, he took the newborn and left it in a sewer. When Isabella woke, she found the crib empty and screamed. Juan, pretending to be shocked, joined her search. They noticed signs of a break-in and assumed the baby had been kidnapped. Isabella called her parents, who involved the police, while Juan cried convincingly, hiding his guilt. The search for the child failed, but Emiliano had found him and named him Matteo. He cared for the boy as his own, waking early to wash his clothes and even bringing him to work. He tied Matteo to his chest while he hauled scrap in his wheelbarrow to sell. Despite his friends mocking him for raising another man's child, Emiliano didn't care. He had lost his own family, his wife left him for a rich man, taking their children with her. Abandoned and alone, he sold his house and built a cabin in the woods, where he now raised Matteo in peace. The boy always stayed by his side, and once he learned to walk, he even helped Emiliano collect bottles to sell for recycling. The child never lacked for anything, as Emiliano took great care to keep him well-dressed and well-shoed. When Matteo was four years old, Emiliano enrolled him in a school where he spent the entire day. There he received good meals and a high-quality education. In the afternoons, Emiliano would pick him up, and when they made a good sale from recycling, they would celebrate by having lunch in a modest restaurant. Matteo called Emiliano his father, who had told him that his mother had died during childbirth. 
The boy loved his father and promised him that one day Emiliano would no longer have to work because he would take care of him. The man cherished those words and was confident that his son would grow up to be a great man. The boy continued studying, and when he was 14, he got a job as a gardener at one of his classmates' houses. Every Saturday he would go to mow the lawn and water the plants, a job for which he was paid a considerable amount. His father helped manage that money. When he graduated from high school, Matteo studied to become an auto mechanic, and to his surprise, his father told him that he had some money saved in the bank. He gave it to Matteo to help him set up his own shop. Matteo was thrilled and couldn't believe it. With that money, he bought the machinery and tools he needed to open his business. On the day they inaugurated the shop after the opening party, as they were both about to go to bed, the man decided to reveal the truth to his son. Matteo was surprised but ran to hug his father, thanking him for everything he had done, even though they didn't share the same blood. With even more emotion, the young man promised that soon his father would no longer have to work. Matteo's workshop struggled at first but flourished after three months, allowing him to hire more workers. Wanting to find his biological family, he hired a detective, but after two fruitless years he gave up. One day the detective returned the sheet Matteo was wrapped in as a baby. A beggar outside saw it and tearfully claimed it reminded her of her lost son. Emiliano, overhearing, learned her son's birth date matched the day he found Matteo. A DNA test confirmed the beggar was Isabella, Matteo's real mother, left homeless after Juan had stolen everything from her. Matteo confronted Juan, who laughed as he admitted to throwing him into the sewer, unaware that a police officer was standing nearby. Juan was promptly arrested. In court, he was stripped of the assets he had stolen from his wife. At last, Matteo was reunited with his mother. He cared for her, as she was still a young woman, and Emiliano was relieved, knowing she would be there for his son when he was no longer around. The three of them lived happily, while the wicked stepfather served a 10-year prison sentence. What are your thoughts on this story? I'd love to hear your opinions, so please share them in the comments section below. Also don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories. Stay tuned for our upcoming content. See you in the next video.